Um, and yeah, the main idea with this session is just to go through these ideas for the basic steps to consider to get um, signatures on a petition. Um, and it's, I think, in my mind, it's designed for when you're starting a campaign. So I'm not, but hopefully it will be useful for you still, Holly, for the last push on signatures. Um, and also just to make the basic point, uh, as Holly has already um, maybe experienced, is that the petition is not your campaign. It's just one element of your campaign. And you might start a petition and then it turns into something else and uh, you follow the moment or you follow the opportunity, which um, maybe takes away your attention from the petition. But that's actually good if that's what where your campaign is growing or what it's doing. Um, and I can, yeah as stuff comes up, I'm going to try and stay on topic. Just, I want to keep within half an hour just for this presentation. Um, uh, but uh, I'll try and use examples as I go. Um, I'm just going to share the screen and um, just let me know, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the our action site, session site, the community platform that you would have seen. Um, and I'll just show you just the, um, what I've updated recently is the campaign tips section, uh, which we can look at. Um, uh, so this is um, just a bunch of stuff that is useful for thinking about your campaign and it's um, on a whole lot of different topics. Uh, and it's also a working document, so it's something which is some. It's a, a resource guide or a bunch of resources that I'm going to keep adding to, and action session will keep adding to over time. Um, so today we're looking at getting more signatures, which is this section. Um, we'll, we'll go through the to the document. Cool. So getting more signatures on your petition whether it's on our action station or on Toko or, or another platform. Um, just, yeah, uh, the first thing to think about is just before we get into the actual tips is just, yeah, that main point of uh, um, use, if you're using a petition, it's a really good base for a campaign, but it's not your campaign. It's really good for um, creating a foundation of supporters around your campaign. Uh, people who want to support um, and uh, creating a base, but then using it as a jumping off point for your other tactics or your other um, the other things that you're doing as part of the campaign. Um, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good for gathering people around it. So the people who sign your petition are your supporter base, and we'll talk more about that um, in terms of communication. Uh, in a bit. Um, and just, yeah, just to consider also uh, there's no one way for each campaign. You know, if there was a template for every campaign that works, then uh, we would just do it all ourselves. <laughs> we would just say, oh yeah, we're going to do this and then we'll win this. Um, there's no one way for a campaign, like for each campaign you have to find the, the way the tactics, the strategy um, that is going to work for you. Um, and as part of that, it's really good just to come back to your strategy at regular points. Um, and your strategy, it doesn't need to be a big theoretical thing. It's, it's really uh, answering some simple questions about why you, start, why you started this campaign and why you're going to start this campaign. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, what is the problem or the situation that you want to change? Um, so what's wrong? Uh, how can it be fixed? What's the solution um, that could answer that problem? And who can do that? So who's your target? Who are you going to focus on to ask to uh, create the solution that will fix your problem? Um, another really important thing is just to keep asking uh, about what, why is it urgent? Why is it important that people take action now? Um, why does it need to be done now and not tomorrow, not in the future? Um, because that's going to create the motivation. So it's going to help um, create time relevant actions within your campaign. So even if it takes one week or one year, maybe it's a long-term campaign, what are the moments within that campaign along the journey that you can work towards and which keeps uh, your supporters on board with the campaign as well. 
Cool. So having thought about all those things and keep, you can keep coming back to them a lot during your campaign. Um, here are the six uh, great steps to consider to um, get signatures for your petition. So imagining that you have a petition or you're about to start a petition. Uh, it's you've answered those questions about what you're, aim what you're aiming for, who your target is, um, and you've launched it out into the wor world. Um, it's really important, no matter how many or how few uh, the number of supporters are, um, that uh, communication, I think this is the key thing to think about the communication along the campaign journey. So um, there's two sides to this. Also, also, I should say, if you have a question at any point, just um, yell out. Mm -hmm. uh, so communication, just in terms of um, updating your supporters along the journey. So bring them along the campaign journey with you and cons cons consider them your base for the campaign. So if they haven't heard from you for a month, just let them know what you're doing. Let them know what your plan is, like how are you going to win the campaign? Let them know what's happening, what's just happened. Um, what are those time relevant things that are coming up? Uh, and also tell them how they can be involved. How can they help? So, um, you know, many people will just sign the petition and, and forget about it. But actually, if you invite, for, for the people who actually care about your campaign, um, who want to support your campaign, actually you can ask them to do more. And it's really good just to think about along the way, what, can, what are those things that people can do? Uh, so it could be just sharing, for a start, just sharing the petition. So after it reaches 500 signatures or 100 signatures, just send out an email to your supporters asking them to share. Um, if it's at 490, then just ask them to share it with your friends to get past the 500 mark or past the 1,000 mark. Um, get them to, yeah, just think about the actions that are, they can do. So email their local MP. Do they have a sh story? Um, you know, are they cyclists that are cycling up to Minion Road and how do they feel about um, not having a cycle path along the along the Minion Road when there's a, um, a train going through? Do you have a Facebook group that they can join? Is there an event coming up? Um, all kinds of things. Uh, so yeah, that's one side. So keep them informed and inside your communication bubble. The other side is just how you communicate and what um, I recommend if you're interested in this, so going to the communication and your campaign uh, summary. Uh, and it just talks about, it talks a little bit about how to talk about, how to talk to your supporters. Um, so consider... Question, Elliot? Oh yeah, sure. No question, please. Um, Regarding keeping in touch with your supporters and so on, um, how do you know the right a number of you know contact to have? Because you know most most of us are just snowed under with emails and so on, and mm. sometimes you just don't want to. And I don't want to read them sometimes, you know. So, mm. is there a, uh, any way of working out <laughs> how often it's a good idea to contact people? I think um, when the, when there's a really urgent moment, then don't worry about how many you're sending out because you could maybe something's happening happening right on one day or tomorrow, and it really needs to go out. And then so you might send out a, a, an alert to say, "Hey, this is happening. Can you take this action? Whatever it is." Um, uh, and then afterwards, uh, yeah, on the day you might send out an an email with a link to a Facebook Live, and this is happening. And then the day after, you might say just give an update to say what's happened. So in in that, on those urgent moments, don't worry about it too much. Otherwise, yeah, it depends. Um, I'd say don't leave it more than a month between communications with your supporters, unless something's not happening. Maybe you're having a quiet period and you can actually say that, hey, we're, we're just volunteers, we're really busy, or we're gonna work behind the scenes and talk, try and lobby our MP, um, so we, you won't hear from us for a while. Um, it's okay to say that. Uh, 
yeah, and if nothing's happening and you don't have anything new to say, it's probably good not to bug them more than once a week. Or, yeah. So, yeah, it depends how it feels. And definitely think about how it feels for yourself to receive these emails. But you'd be surprised because I, I quite like, you know, for a local campaign, for something that I'm especially interested in, definitely the ones that I'm not. Maybe I signed something because I've felt that I wasn't so interested in it and I won't open that email. But for something that I actually care about, I will open that email and it's really cool to hear from a person if you put your name at the bottom of the email and to hear from that person regularly with news about the campaign and an update about what happened. It actually makes people feel included. The other thing was um, how many signatures do you need to have on a petition to make it um, useful? It totally depends on the campaign. There are campaigns, we've had petitions on our site which won the campaign with 100 signatures. Uh, we've had a, the biggest petition on our site last year, had over 20,000 and it didn't win. So it's really not, it doesn't, yeah, the number's not relevant across all petitions. It really depends on the campaign and what your target is and who's listening. You could just use the petition as a, for something else to, sh you know, you could, sometimes it's just used as a media story and it's a, it's a hook for a journalist to tell the story about your issue. And they'll say, hey, this is why it's a, this, you know, they'll use it for that moment because there's a petition about it. So sometimes a petition has other uh, objectives than just being delivered and getting legislation changed, for example. It could be something else. It comes back to those questions that you're asking, what are you trying to change and why and when? Can I, can I give an example yeah, sure. um, of a local petition, not, not an Our Action Station petition in, in Auckland, but it was a local road safety petition. In some ways, the, the numbers were really important, but then the family of somebody who'd been killed on that road signed the petition. Yeah. And the fact that they'd signed the petition became the story. Um, right, right. A really huge, powerful story. So yeah, sometimes it's not as much about how many as about who. Yeah. Um, Hamilton City Council gave a limit of 100 uh, people who actually live in Hamilton with real Hamilton addresses for um, a campaign to get a uh, proper recycling uh, in place in Hamilton City Council, uh, in the Hamilton area. So, And so the, the campaigner uh, for that petition, her aim was just to get 100 signatures and actually it gave her the chance to deliver it to the council meeting she got a meeting she was able to present to the council and talk to them directly and they committed to a review of the waste system in hamilton because of that petition okay cool um uh i was yeah maybe just to put it in your minds not to go through so much but just consider who you're talking to how to motivate people you know, personal stories are really important. Um, you know, personal experiences help people engage. Images help people engage. Uh, you can tell a story within your email in a very short time saying, you know, what brings us together? What's the problem? What can we do about it? This, what is, you know, what, this, we have this difficult challenge, but here is the hope if you take action now. Um, imagine lots of different people reading your emails. So it's really good to keep it uh, clear, use clear language. Um, and yeah, be open about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So um, you, and you can share your strategy uh, with people who are supporting you. Um, yes, and there's more information on that document. Um, cool, so that was number one. Any other questions about Communication. Uh, I've, 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 Sorry, just one thing about uh, the signatures and the petition again thing. Um, do they have to be like all? Do all the signatures have to be in New Zealand? Uh, it helps, but um, yeah. So you're thinking about the the funding, so that um your campaign to look at military spending. I think for, I think for 
issues that really different does help that it's new that's that's New Zealand postcards. Um, also, I, maybe I should say actually like in our experience, MPs are really happy to accept a petition of five thousand signatures. For example, for them that seems significant. Um, if it gets up to twenty thousand, then they're very happy. They will go out of their way to accept that petition. Um, but that's also quite hard. It's quite a hard, higher target to reach. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so number two, I, I would always emphasize number one, communication is very important. Um, but to go on to the other ones, so number two, just um, look at who your allies are. So if you're in a, if you're in the transport sector, if you're in the, if there's other peace organisations, if there's other animal rights organisations, um, is it a campaign that they will support? Uh, touch base. Would they actually spread the petition if it's not too tied with your branding? Um, if they're on board with the ask. Um, so I think, for example, Julie, so you. I saw an email from Generation Zero sharing your campaign, which was great. It was um, Generation Zero um, supporting your petition. Yep, that was fantastic. And they actually did a targeted um, mail out to people who'd supported bike related campaigns before. So it was really, it was much more likely to bring people, which was great. Awesome. So yeah, that gave us a boost of a couple of hundred, two or three hundred, four hundred, which was you know, perfect timing. <laughs> I think even if they don't share directly, it's really good just to get feedback. If, they're, mm -hmm. if you're working in their space and it's just that they know that you're doing this campaign, yep. they may have some feedback as well. Um, the other thing which is not so common, um, but it's possible because it's, um, I'll just use this example, which is Nigel Ladder, who, um, I don't know how he heard about the campaign, but it was an open submission to the Mental Health Inquiry, which was taking place earlier in the year, um, about mindfulness, asking for support and funding for mindfulness for young people in schools. Um, and Nigel Ladder took this on as a campaign, which he feels very strongly about, and he shared it on his Facebook page. Um, and it doubled the number of signatures overnight. Um, so <laughs> even if it not likely it's still quite good just reaching out to people um just to see if they would support it and especially if it's relevant to them if they if they if it's something that they would take on personally and put their name to then you know it's it's it can be priceless cool number three is um be active on social media so social media is really important all the time uh these days and this um, a bunch of little things that you can do to, so you're probably already active on it um, as a person, uh, but you can consider uh, starting a Facebook page for your, for your event. Um, and I'll just show you an example. Um, also creating materials with social media in mind, and I'll just show you this little uh, video. Okay. So um, I just showed you that. Whoops. I'll close that. <laughs> uh, I just showed you that because um, it's that was actually video is something which shares really well on social media, um, and even if you don't have the capacity to do something like that, which I don't know how easy it is. But it's quite simple. It's like uh, using photos and captions on top. Um, um, even if you can't do something like that, actually just using images here based on social media. So creating your own images, maybe getting good quality photos and adding text or um, slogans, your campaign messages 
um, it makes it easy to they share easier. Um, something else just to mention about that campaign was that they had that all worked out before the campaign was launched. So they um, uh, they had their messaging worked out, they had their slogans, uh, they had their images and it was all tied together, which was, made it very effective. Also as another example is this, um, if you see your campaign or the issue mentioned anywhere, just putting in the link to the petition in the comments and it's something that not just you could do, but uh, if your supporters are aware of it or you maybe if, if you have a campaign team or people on your team who could do this. So this is a, um, a feature on the issue on the project and so she, and she's, they, it's unlikely for media to link directly to the um, petition because they don't want to be seen as campaigning themselves. Um, so it's, some, but it's something that you can do in the comments or, or um, if there's yeah, other places in social media. Um, what else? Just, yeah, just using things that social media allows you to do. So doing little videos, it could also be a Facebook Live. And this is an example of um, what Action Station did during the election campaign last year, is do a Facebook Live interview with political party uh, representatives. Um, and it's just something which it creates an event. So basically it's an event, but it's on Facebook, it's inside the Facebook, so it's easy to share and you can advertise it's coming up, invite people to it, even if it's not many people, it's a recording which you can then share and use afterwards as well. Um, what else? There was the Facebook group or page just considered doing this. Um, this is an example of a campaign which started with a petition and then turned into something else. So actually they set up the Facebook page after the petition they got a, a bunch of signatures and then invited everyone onto their Facebook page. And then it became a very, this was just quite special to their campaign where it became a very active campaign on the Facebook and they kind of forgot about the petition and just um, did lots of stuff. And they messaged everybody and communicated with everybody through the Facebook page. Um, and for their campaign, it, it really worked. Um, and that was an example of, yeah, following the organic. If something works in some way, then, then follow what works and use that for your campaign. Something which, um, it's not very common, but it's such a something to consider is if you have a long-term, it, it can be used either way, like as a long-term campaign, which maybe you don't have moments, but you, um, you just have ongoing Facebook ads, which are relatively cheap to keep it in people's news feeds, especially if you, if you have good content that works. If you know that it works, like a video that works really well and people are sharing it, you can sponsor that um, to stay in people's news feeds. The other moment, the other thing is if it's a very specific moment and you just wanna um, get, give a boost to your campaign, um, then it's an option as well. Um, just one risk of that is that if you start putting money into Facebook ads, then uh, when, once you stop paying for ads, there's a tendency for them, for your posts not to share so well. So um, it can affect your organic growth. Mm -hmm. um, create your own media. So this is just a reference to um, just in this time of social media that you can actually be very effective without relying on traditional media uh, and create your own content. So what we've already, already referred to, which is... Um, your own videos, your own stories, your own blog posts. Um, if you find, if, you know, using personal stories is really um, effective. So if you have people in your supporter base who have personal experience of your issue, if it's riding bikes or if it's um, how people feel about animals or um, uh, people with mental health or experience of a mental health service that is in danger, then actually being able to tell the stories is very easy because you can interview people directly, um, ask people to share a story or to um, give it a little video themselves and it's something that you can share through your own networks. Um, yeah, uh, creating blog posts. So actually it's just about creating content which you can then share. So whatever your 
platform is it could be through the petition site that you're emailing out to people it could be on your facebook page it could be um in other places uh yeah i uh, just as an example of that is some just something this is the this is a campaign sorry i'll just go back to this is a blog post that i wrote about a campaign by zoe palmer um which it's actually just it just actually goes through the steps that happened in her campaign. Um, it started, the petition came halfway through her campaign. She started with a survey. So, so the issue was that the mental health service that she had experience of herself um, is in danger still of being merged into an adult service. It's a specialist service for young people to call if they are ever in a crisis with mental health. And the Nelson, it's in Nelson, and the DHP in Nelson is um, planning on uh, getting rid of, it, rid of it, or actually just merging it with the adult service. Uh, so she started a campaign to save it. Um, she did a survey. She ran public event. She made her own documentary, which is this thing, and it's just a six-minute documentary. It's got uh, interviews with people who have used the service, a teacher at her school who talked about how important it was, um, somebody from the local union talking about how important it was and um, how they needed to save it. Um, and it's just something, she's a high school student, it's something that anybody can do, post online, um, post on YouTube and then share at um, any time in the future. Um, just, yeah, she started the petition after doing the documentary. Um, or at the same time, because actually at the end of the documentary, it invites people to sign the petition somewhere. I can't find it. Anyway, um, just, yeah, and actually after that, it um, scaled up. So she actually made a submission to the mental health inquiry. She organized her own public meeting to give a push to signatures on the petition and actually to talk to politicians. Um, deliver the position to Parliament. Cool. Cool. Uh, number five, collect physical signatures. Um, and this is really good, especially for local campaigns, I think. Um, it's got lots of benefits, and it's probably not something that you think of straight away with online petitions, but actually you can download the PDF of your petition from this from the platform and collect physical signatures. I recommend it especially for local campaigns which are specific to an area because it connects people. If you go out, out into that area um, to talk about your local campaign, it's just a way of uh, talking directly to the people in that area who will be affected directly. Um, it's also really good, um, it might not, bring in thousands of signatures, unless it's something that you do nationwide, you could do a day of action and get, in, get, get everybody out in the country for your campaign. But um, it's especially good for practicing your messaging. So actually talking about your campaign and finding out in firsthand what works with your messaging. Um, and also what doesn't work and then what you need to change because you really need to engage people quite quickly on the street. So just within a few, within a minute, just being able to talk about, to motivate somebody to talk about why your campaign is important, uh, what, how, you, how you're how you going to fix the problem and why, why their signature is really, why their support is really important to make that happen. And like you said before, Elliot, um, and then you can engage people who mm. want to help. So yep. those that perhaps are old school and want to do, you know, face-to-face -face, yep. um, petitioning. Yep. Well, so it's, it's funny, but, you know, people ask what's the point of petitions, but on the other side of it, people often ask, where's the petition? So are you, we, are you, when, when I worked at SAFE, for example, we ran regular stalls and we would be out on the street and the main aim would be for outreach or one of the aims was, was just general outreach, talk about animal issues and people would come up because they cared about animals and ask to sign the petition. You know, they, they wouldn't know what the petition was. They would just ask you, well, where's the petition? <laughs> I really care about animals. <laughs> um, I really care about pigs, where's the petition? <laughs> right. 
uh, and there's a session here which um, was run recently by 350 Aotearoa, just about, um, it's, a, it's another training video, just uh, which you can watch, and it, um, it's an in-depth look at how you can do go about that. Uh, just, yeah, just to note, if you are collecting physical signatures, it's really good to upload them online. So do, if you can do data entry or if you can find people to help you do data entry, just to upload the signatures online to add to the petition quite soon after that, because people get notification that of, from, from the site that they've signed this petition and it's good that they'll be able to remember that they signed it if it's um, soon in time. Um, also, if you add them to the online form, it means that they you can communicate with them through email after that. Uh, did I just do two number fives? I uh, need some proofing, doesn't it? There's actually seven tips. <laughs> uh, number five, two, uh, is organize offline events. Um, so, yeah, uh, Facebook Live is an action, it's an online event, um, so actually it could come under here as well, but events of any type, including offline, um, which means that you can actually then talk about them online as well, because you can get photos which you can share online, um, you can get stories, you can um, talk about it through emails as well to say what happened. Um, so for example, a dope action where you, you invite lots of people to go out and get signatures at the same time. Um, any kind of stunt or visual event, visual event that you can get great photos for. It could be, this could include a petition delivery. Um, so, so any kind of uh, offline event, just think about how it looks in a photo or in a video and how you can um, make that uh, look better. Or also representing your campaign and the message in your campaign. Um, if it's a positive message, then keep it positive. If it's a, a challenging message, then yeah, how do you make it challenging? Um, any kind of public meeting, a public talk, uh, it could be a musical concert and support, it could be a rally which is um, more challenging. Are there any experts in the field? Um, yeah, actually just doing things. So I think this comes under the heading of doing things. So you've got the petition, but then what are you getting your supporter base to do? Are they take it? You could invite them to take a survey, um, you know, take part in this event, donate to help you do this event. Uh, can they, yeah. Can, if you do an event, you take a video, can your supporters share the video with their friends? Um, cool. And so final tip, which is actually number seven, yeah, actual traditional me media, are there opportunities for traditional media to tell your story? Uh, this, is, this actually isn't the best way of getting signatures because often it doesn't link directly to your petition. Um, it's more about general awareness and your issue, talking about your issue in public um, and getting a lot of people just seeing your issue out there. Um, is this, are you doing any events that you can do a press release about? Are there any events that a journalist who writes about your issue is, is, has written about for, and you might just want to give them a heads up that it's happening? They might want to come along and tell your story. Um, is there a personal story involved? It's really good in a press release to feature quotes from a real person uh, and the effect of how they feel about the issue and how it affects them. Yeah, is there something time uh, time relevant, uh, something urgent right now? Because that's often how the media cycle is driven, is <coughs> what's happening right now. Are there any questions about those things? I just, um, any thoughts or comments or how if it's relevant or not relevant to your campaign? Very relevant for me. Mm. 
Yeah. In what way? Well, yep, we'd have to get petitions going to get to generate the interest and um, build our support base. So, yeah, it'll be part of our planning. Um, but, but, yeah. Yeah, so basically, yeah, generate the awareness and the reasoning and, um, and then build from there, I would say. So, thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm at, like, the... Um other end of it which is about to deliver a petition so I feel like for us what we're thinking a lot about is um, the media opportunities and having events and yeah trying to find like timeliness um, with the media as well is really important and yeah trying to find a way that we can um, yeah create these sort of opportunities to do one last sort of big push so yeah we've got before we deliver the petition, which we'd like to get media to come to that as well, or for that to be a story too. But we're kind of thinking maybe a month out, um, so in like mid-October, to um, do a kind of a publicity stunt. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely like, yeah, good to get a bit of an idea of like what, yeah, what kind of stuff you can do and like, yeah, sharing stories. And I think yeah, it keeps coming back to that personal storytelling. Um, yeah, and I think what the challenge is for me is with the personal storytelling is that it is a really important thing. Like, what we're trying to do is would actually have really amazing results for, like, our oceans and our communities and that kind of thing, but it's quite a complex issue to talk about. And so that's, I think, been the, sort of a big challenge for us is trying to explain because it's got all these different benefits but if you try to explain all of them you have this huge list and it's like yeah trying to like help people to connect I think what um lots of campaigns that have worked really well have been able to do is really connect on that like kind of heart level and so I'm, I'm trying to sort of find where the heart is in our campaign and how I can kind of communicate that effectively so that's kind of where I'm at but yeah it was really good to to yeah definitely hear about the media and event stuff then there Holly you took it's a, um it's a bottle deposit campaign for plastic and cans yeah so it's essentially like what we used to have but it would be with any kind of beverage container so yeah aluminium glass plastic tetra packs and yeah so it's the whole whole kit and caboodle and it's been getting really amazing um recycling rates overseas lots of different countries that have just started introducing them like england and scotland canada's got them germany's got them nearly all of australia's either got them or is about to introduce them wow. um but i think what i really love is the community aspect of it which is that if we had it here in New Zealand, what we'd really love to see is them being actually run by like community recycling centers and local environment groups. And they get a handling fee for doing that. And it's actually a huge money earner for them. Like scouts who run just three deposit places in South Australia get 20 million a year revenue from it. That's amazing. So that's really cool. Um, oh, sorry, I'm getting a phone call at the same time. <laughs> just got that. Um, Bloody. I'll, I'll mute myself, sorry. <laughs> you guys can hear that. I, th I think with your campaign, though, like you're quite close to 10,000, which is just this great round number that you can get people around to aim for as well. Like it's going to create motivation. And um, yeah, it's when you've booked your petition delivery, it's, it's a very specific date and something concrete to work towards. Totally. Holly, a lot of uh, people who are um, a lot older will have grown up with, um, you know, getting money for soft drink bottles and using recycled milk bottles and all of that kind of thing. And um, I don't know if there's a way you can capitalise on the older age group because uh, it's a very powerful memory and it, it's really it's it's quite disgusting the way we waste so much material these days 
So it's just a thought that I had anyway. Yeah, that's a really good thought. And yeah, that has come up before. Um, yeah, and I think maybe I do need to capitalise on that more because I think not being able to remember it's made me not think of it as being as that being such a strong memory for people. But when I do talk to people about it who are a bit older than me, they're like, yeah, wow, we used to have that. It was amazing. Or like the stories I've noticed that seem to get a lot of traction around it are like things like um, recently on Radio New Zealand, there's this thing about um, milk and glass bottles coming back and people wanting Fonterra to bring back the milk and glass bottles. And that seemed to get like enormous amounts of interest and people commenting and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's definitely, it's been a really interesting learning experience for me trying to like, get my head out of my own bubble of what I think is relevant or important and actually look at what everyone else is um, finding to be important and what excites other people rather than just me. So yeah, it's been a good learning experience for that. It could be quite, quite a funny little video if you had older people trying to explain to younger, younger people why it was so cool to have bottled products. <laughs> yeah, true. That would be cool. That's amazing. I, oh. I came in just at the tail end of it and you could, it was a revenue stream for kids. If you didn't have totally. a job for a, um, a milk bottle run or a paper round, you would just go around and collect bottles and you would knock on people's doors and you'd get like get enough to buy whatever it was you wanted to buy, like fish and chips. Yeah, chill. yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. So that, there may be a kind of generational bridge that you could create between mm. the remember and their, their children now who have no option for that kind of like quick mm. planet-saving money-making. That would be a cool little video, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that idea. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, I've got to tap out in like now-ish, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. Cool. yeah, but thank you everyone for your awesome feedback and yeah, I'll catch you, catch you next time. <laughs> um, see you, Holly. See ya. Thanks for joining us. Can I just show you guys a little video? It's, it was, it was um, made by a campaigner just yesterday. And um, it, yeah, just as an example of what something quite simple but works um, very effective as well. Is that, is that sharing? Just try and find it. So this is uh, Grace and she's her issue is a little bit um it's a it's a little bit complicated to explain, but it's about um this the uh, supplement of this financial support that the government gives to, to older people who are in residential care. So her mum's uh, suffering from yep. dementia and she had to go into a home and she um just according to the criteria which is present, which is set at the moment, she wasn't able to access that financial help. So Grace is running a campaign to change the legislation around it. Um, she just posted this yesterday. I can't hear, Elliot. Oh, is that not coming through? The volume's really low. Uh, is that something about Zoom or how about I might just take the link and you can um, it's actually if you look for her she's Grace Taylor Mamaji um, and I'll just put the link in chat as well it's a very long link <laughs> Um, you know, I just, it's just quite uh, effective for people who are, they know who the campaigner is. Uh, she's just started the petition in the last two weeks, so they, they should have some memory of what the issue is. Um, and she's just giving a little update, less than two minutes long, by video on her Facebook page. Um, yeah. Can I... Actually, just while you're there, I might just um, also just share a couple of things on the resources uh, list of resources. Oops. Um, okay, sorry, I've lost it. 
share this again. Um, so this is just a couple of things which, uh, so as I was saying, like these are being added to over time. So some, some subject things are just a video. So this is the mobilizing campaigning offline. It's an awesome resource, but it, it is actually just the training video that we did, that we re recorded a couple of months ago with Neve from 350. Um, but there's a couple of other things which I recommend checking out, which is um, uh, useful tools. Um, and this is just a list of things which you might find useful at some point in your campaign. Um, so these are things like a graphic design site for people who aren't graphic designers. It's something that I use all the time just to get a nice, uh, to, for example, to get words onto an image. Um, if I want to share something on Facebook, I can put it, I can make it in Canva first. Uh, we're actually using Zoom at this moment, so you know already what it is. Share link, if you want to share, uh, if you want to share a petition through Facebook, this creates the the link that you can send out by email that go, takes people directly to Facebook with your petition and the link. Hemingway is really good for um, making your, language clearer so it tells you how difficult your language is um, for myself like I went to university and it taught me to write in a very uh, academic way and so I find Hemingway is really helpful for picking that picking those um, bits up and I can reword it just to make it very simple and active for all is um, if you're ever needing HTML um, actually there's if you're putting emails if you're sending out emails through our extension platform it actually gives you a hotmail function so you can actually make with Ferrala you can actually make it look nice and then take the code and put it into the our extension email um, directly uh, emojis if you like using emojis gifs if you like using gifs uh, bitly is kind of cool it's kind of a uh, good because the hour extension session links are often quite long. And so if you just want to create a very short link that people could, uh, if, especially if you want to write it down, then that makes it very um, easy. Also, if you want to use macrons, if you're using Marty Woods, um keyboard setup for macrons, it's, it's handy just to put it into your keyboard. Uh, what else? Um, I, yeah, actually, um, I just recommend this in black blog posts that I add to over time. So for example, uh, Zoe's blog that I referred to here is coming from, that's linked to from there as well. If you really want to get in deep with campaigning, it's, you never stop learning. And there's, uh, if you just follow your nose, for example, 350 uh, has this um, quite easy, awesome trainings online, which I recommend checking out if you have time. Cool. Is that too much information? Just enough. Gonna, gonna die. Just enough. <laughs> yeah. We're right on seven o'clock. So, yeah, feel free if you have any other questions or comments. Otherwise, we can wrap up. Um, thank you. Thank you, Elliot. The, the written um, supplement looks amazing. I'm going to work my way through it in the next few days. I really appreciate it. Don't get lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope it helps Spike Auckland. Nice. Thank you. It's just taking the time out of the campaign to actually work on the skills and so on, things to do, because sometimes it's easy to get really bogged down, and, you know, doing the stuff and rather than learning how to do it better. But yeah, well, I think that's a good way to start, like actually just start your campaign and start doing it because I have total sympathy like I'm very lucky and it's a very unique situation where I, it's actually my job to do campaign. Whereas for the community campaigners, obviously most on, on the whole, uh, they're volunteers or volunteer teams. And so it's actually something that they do in their spare time. Um, so actually it, it's, it will be something that you learn along the way as you, mm -hmm. as you do it. And as you realize, oh, this needs to be done, you won't, yeah, it's not something that you go to school for or um, 
yeah and even if you did go to school it's actually something that you you know i'm learning all the time as i do stuff i get a feeling that different stories and different campaigns and contexts will require very different things and that it'll it'll teach you as you go yep campaign and the magic source for one of them will be different from another um, yeah but there's so many things mm. surprise. Yeah, I guess something else unique about my position is that um, I get to see behind the scenes, I, not all the time because stuff happens in other places and I don't hear about it, but um, just I get to see all the community campaigns going through the site and the journeys that they take. And, you know, obviously only, a, you know, a certain percentage become successful, um, but others are successful for other reasons. And yeah, um, it's each journey is different for each campaigner in each campaign. And so even if a campaign doesn't achieve its stated goal, um, it will generate a community of interest that is then there for the next, whatever the next thing is. Yeah. And some, you know, we use the slogan, people power at action session, but really it is about not just giving the tools into the hands of campaigners to do campaigns, but actually even for the people supporting your campaign, actually giving them hope and the something to do to make the world a better place and if you can show the effect of that support even if it wasn't exactly what you were asking for if it was what you were asking for then even better but even if it wasn't exactly that then actually just showing the effect of their action and feeding that back to them is you know that's mm. so powerful totally yeah. it's not alone even if it's a couple of hundred people you it's a couple of hundred people that's awesome yeah exactly that you've influenced mm. Okay, that was a very positive note, hopefully. <laughs> so we can finish off, and we've lost Liz as well. Yeah. Thank you guys um, for joining. Oh. Sorry, was I on mute for some of that time? Or? Uh, sorry, I did put you on mute, mute just as there was some background noise coming through. All right. Hope, sorry. It's okay. Uh, yep. We didn't miss something for you. No yeah. problem. Okay, yeah, Thank just feel free to get in touch at any time if you have questions. Great. Well, thank you. See, See you. Nice to meet you, Avalara. Bye, Jalissa. Bye.